Live from Moore Gymnasium on the campus of Bethune-Cookman University in beautiful downtown Daytona Beach, Florida. It's time for the final game at Moore Gym this season as the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats battle the Alabama State Hornets in a crucial game for seeding come tournament time. Bethune-Cookman in fifth place, tied with Jackson State at eight and six. They own that tiebreaker. Alabama State one game back at seven and seven in a three-way tie with UAPB and Alabama A&M. Everything to play for tonight. Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Michael Trevino. Happy to have your company. Henson White joins me for one last time at Moore Gym this season. Both teams desperately needing a win into this one, Henson. Yeah, this is a this is about as must-win as must-win games get. Alabama State had a tough loss on the road up at Tallahassee playing FAMU in overtime and now coming here needing to win to really stay in the race for the playoffs and to have good seedings especially. Bethune Cookman coming off of a wild 63-61 comeback win, a game winner almost at the buzzer by Deshaun Dyson, but remember, Dyson's heroics last year came not against Alabama A&M in this building, but against this very Hornets team as he banked a winner in at the buzzer. It's now time for the Southeast Toyota dealers keys to the game. Henson, what do you got for us? Well, for Alabama State, the key to the game is finish strong. Last, we, last game out, they lost to FAMU, as I said, in overtime, but they had a 13-point lead. They had... We talked about it at around halftime, and we were like, well, Alabama State's really pulling away. And we looked back, and all of a sudden, they were losing late. So finish strong. If you're a, if you're a Hornets fan, you need this team to play to all of the whistles, not just the halftime one, and really keep in rhythm with the Wildcats. And for the Wildcats, their key to the game will be forced turnovers and make those turnovers count. You know, we've seen it with both the men's and women's team. They will force turnovers and get the ball and get those alternating possessions and have more shots but just won't make those extra shots count in the grand scheme and that's something that they have to work on if they want to win here tonight all to play for it's going to be a wonderful game here last game in more gymnasium all the plots and things before it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a battle between the team with the most steals per game in the conference. That's Bethune Cookman at 11 per game. And of course, Damani McIntyre, who's the stealer extraordinaire, the VCU record holder in steals with 169. And the team that turns the ball over the least in the conference. Alabama State only turns the ball over 11.4 times per game, a complete opposite of what we saw in the last game with Alabama State's women's team turning the ball over 25 times. Yeah. The, the other hallmark of this Alabama a and team is they are so stout defensively. First in points per game allowed, first in field goal percentage against, first in rebounds and offensive rebounds. So it's going to be a tough task for the Wildcats if they want to not just stay with, but defeat this Alabama State team. Now the Wildcats did beat Alabama State on the road up in Alabama back on the second of the month. 79-68, so they won kind of pulling away at the end, so Bama State has revenge on the mind this evening. Yep. Going to be a very fun game to watch, see if the uh, offense or the defense wins really to start it off. I, I think these first, you know, first I'd say five, six minutes of this half are really going to tell you what kind of game it's going to be. Is the is it going to be an offensive shootout as we've sometimes seen or is it going to be a much more slower methodically paced game starting lineups for the both teams for alabama state micah octave starts with coach's son tj madlock isaiah range also out there with cj hines and the best rebounder on this team ubong okan and for bethune cookman only one change from the lineup that played on saturday with Jacoby Hetty out there with Zion Harmon, Deshaun Dyson, Reggie Ward Jr. and a change at the center position, James Henderson gets the start instead of Elijah Halsaway. And as we head down to the feet floor for the national anthem. As we come to the end of Black History Month, at this time, we ask that everyone in attendance please rise. Gentlemen, kindly remove your cap. My veterans, you may come. For the singing of Lift Every Voice in the City. Whether it's the 
performed in the Black National Anthem, a special guest, Carl Van Richards, Chashia English, Monet Coleman, Ebony Brock, Joy Westbrook, Armand Bluker, and Joseph Ross. As starting lineups are about to be introduced on the floor by PA announcer Larry Steele, I want to get your final thoughts on not only this game, but this season for BCU men's basketball. It's a team that has at times looked like world beaters, but at times has gone very cold, especially out shooting the ball outside. Yeah, the you know, if you look at their overall record, especially in conference, games in which they don't score. I think I found this out a couple of games ago. I think it was the all, uh, not the all corn game, but either Texas Southern Prairie View game. If they're held under 70, 75, 76 points, usually they don't win. Now, obviously, they beat Alabama A&M last time out 63, 61. But a good litmus test to see if the Wildcats are going to win a basketball game is if they can't get their offense going. And to your point, right, we had Coach Theus on the postgame show on Saturday, and he, he he praised his team's ability to grind out a win in a low-scoring game, which is not what this team wants to do. They want a pace of play, turn the ball over, pick up the ball and run after rebounds, and space the floor offensively. And they have not been able to do that as frequently as they have earlier in the season, the last couple of games, as teams have learned that and adjusted accordingly. Yeah, I mean, they're very... Hot, cold team, you know, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, win, loss, loss, win. So if we're going by that record, we should win this game. But it's, you know, you want to go in that tournament and you want to have, first of all, good seating. You know, you don't want to have to play Southern first. You don't want to have to play Grambling first or Jackson State. You want to play somebody, you know, a little bit weaker to start out the uh, tournament to heighten your chances of getting to that next level. So winning out these last couple of games would put them in a really good spot to at least you know make a semi-final it's going to be tough to win out because their next road trip grambling state and southern the two top teams in the SWAC right now grambling state 11 and 3 and has beaten the wildcats twice uh, and beat the wildcats the first time southern 10 and 4 but the wildcats did beat them the first time so the wildcats have a potential to hold a double tie break over the jaguars right now they are a game back of alcorn state who has the double tie break over them and tied with jackson state who they split one one with alabama state comes in at seven and seven tied with alabama a and m and arkansas pine bluff for the last spot in the tournament looking up at them they have a two-game buffer back to prairie a and m 
Florida A&M, who they lost to, is 3-11 and in Mississippi Valley State, 0-14. That is your conference standings coming into tonight. Alabama State in the road gray uniforms with the yellow and black trim, the Hornet logo in the middle of the chest, yellow numbers with a black outline. The Wildcats in their home gold, white numbers with maroon trim and maroon claw marks on the pants. James Henderson and Ubong Okan, the seven foot one sophomore from Nigeria, is set to tip things off for the final time here at Moore Gymnasium. We're glad you could join us right here on the Cat Eye Network as the Wildcats look to end their Daytona Beach schedule on a high note. It's Ocon against Henderson, and the taller man wins the tip, and away we go. Alabama State really likes to move the ball on the perimeter. Lots of ball screens. Three from the wing. Short, but the tip-in is missed. A third opportunity for the Hornets. So the ball is batted out of bounds, and it'll stay with Alabama State. Three looks and more coming on this opening attack from Micah Octave. Yeah, Dyson almost put it in for Alabama State. They're trying to get a corral that rebound, but did a good job. Catch and shoot from the corner. Three is good, and Alabama State opens the scoring through Isaiah Range, who shoots three-pointers at 25%. Big volume shooter, though, for them. Alabama State without the services tonight of Eric Coleman, the senior from Buford, Georgia, who was injured in the first matchup between these teams and has not seen the floor since. Ball out of bounds. It'll stay with the Wildcats and Jacoby Hetty. It'll be interesting to see how James Henderson matches up against Ocon, a taller defender. Ashawn Dyson, who hit the game winner as time expired both last year against this team and on Saturday against the Bulldogs of AM. This is his first opportunity, and the Hornets come away with it. And a big block by James Henderson. But unfortunately, Deshaun Dyson's foot was on the line, so the Hornets will keep possession. That's two early blocks for James Henderson. You know, we were worried how he'd uh, work with this taller defender on him, but he's done a great job of switching and making those kind of possessions matter. Bethune-Cookman, not a big blocking team, only 3.3 .3 blocks per game on average. Catch and shoot, Octave off to the left. Ocon grabs the board, kicks it all the way out. Dyson can't get the steal. Three on the way, too strong. And Deshaun grabs the board. Big screen to get Dyson free into the paint, fading away. He'll go to the free throw line as he got hip-checked by Octave. Correction, that foul goes on T.J. Madlock, the top scorer for this Alabama State team and son of head coach Tony Madlock. Scores at 15 and a half points per game. He's backed up by C.J. Hines' 10. It definitely helps when your son is good at basketball so you don't feel bad about playing him a lot. <laughs> Well, Tony Madlock in his second season as the coach of Alabama State came over from the MEAC in South Carolina State. And in his one season with the Bulldogs, they finished top four in the country in total rebounds. His son followed him from South Carolina State. Yep, and of course, this is an Alabama State team that leads the SWAC in rebounding at this moment in time. C.J. Hines off the screen from Ocon. Hines kick to the corner, good close out by Hetty. And another block by Henderson as C.J. Hines skipped through the lane. First touch of the ball for Zion Harmon, long pass to the corner. Dyson steps through and finds money. That's three early blocks from James Henderson and wonderful ball movement to get that open look for Dyson. Attacking the closeout. Tough catch for Ocon. Gets two defenders in the air. And foul on the floor, so no shot. And a good goal against James Henderson. But for Henderson getting three early blocks before he picks up his first foul, that's a good confidence-building start 
for the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Yeah, especially with the set, you know, you, as we've talked about, he is giving up a couple inches to Okong there down low. And now the referees talk about something. I wonder if they're discussing whether the inbound should be a baseline in or a sideline in, and we will go to the monitor for the first time today. Oh. No, we will not. <laughs> had a lot of that on Saturday. Really, the game had not much rhythm to it because there were so many reviews and stoppages. And then a miscommunication between Octave and Hines turns the ball over. The ball goes all the way down into the Wildcat locker room. Ball needed a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds of rest there. First turnover of the game for Alabama State. A team that averages a swack lowest 11 turnovers a game. As Henson mentioned in his Southeast Toyota dealers keys to the game. Zion Harmon attacks, pitches to Ward. He goes up and under and lays it in. And that's the vision of Zion Harmon. Yes, we love his scoring, but we really also love the assists that he provides. Missed shot off the window and a reach-in foul against Zion. And already this Alabama State team showing their dominance on the boards, out-rebounding Bethune-Cookman 6-2. Yeah. And Zion Harmon got in foul trouble last game. He had to sit for much of the second half because he was sitting at four fouls for a while. Had to get subbed in on alternating possessions. Couldn't basically couldn't play defense at all, so he gets subbed out whenever a salvage of play occurred. Octave doesn't take the three. Hines travels before getting a shot away. Wildcats standing stout defensively early on. And if you're not going to get those rebounds, you got to make them. You got to get the ball back another way. And causing these turnovers is one way to definitely do that. No turnovers for the Wildcats to, in this first four minutes. Token pressure showed by Alabama State. They'll drop back into a man coverage defense. Petty gets it back, screen and three. Drains it. And again, good job by Henderson to set that screen to take two defenders out of the plane. Octave tries to respond. Short. And I thought Petty was going to dunk that in the wrong basket. Jacoby, good defense by Octave to prevent him from going straight to the basket. And then Octave pokes it away. All the way down the lane for the tough layup. Doing a lot right and then just gets it stolen. Good job to not foul, though. But again, we see the hot and cold nature. Dyson, step back three. He maintains his confidence from his game winner on Saturday. Yeah. And ironically, even Coach Diaz said he wasn't having the greatest game before that moment. He was struggling from the field, but immediately today, he's, he's on. This is an Alabama State team that is not afraid of shooting the three, but that time, Hines goes for the short ranger. As a team shooting 27.6% from beyond the arc, Henderson and Hines get tied up. Play continues. Henderson's done a great job of kind of getting up on these screens. and Zion traps. Jump pass is intercepted. And then a long pass for the cutting TJ Madlock and his first point to the game. And from 11-5 up, it's now 11-9. as Alabama State has hit four of their last five field goals. Ward isolated top of the key. Henderson hands the heady six to shoot. Jacoby attacks, loses the ball. Two seconds left, gotta get a shot up. And oh. he got it! I'm not sure how he pulled that one off, but somehow he hit it at the buzzer. Spin move fading away. Tough shot after tough shot. 
And that's the kind of shots that need to go down for the Wildcats if they want to remain competitive in this one. Madlock out to Hines, attacks the closeout, extra pass into the corner. Three no good, another rebound by Ocon, and a foul called against Henderson. And we get the first media timeout before they go to the free throw line. Southeast Toyota Dealers is a proud supporter of Bethune-Cookman basketball. Visit your local Southeast Toyota Dealers or explore toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. And the 2024 Starry Swack Men's and Women's Basketball Tournaments presented by Buick returns to the Magic City on Wednesday, March 13th through Saturday, March 16th. As the league's top eight teams on both sides look to bring home championship titles with two NCAA tournament berths on the line. This year's tournament is scheduled to be held in downtown Birmingham at Barto Arena, with all 14 men's and women's tournament games set to be broadcast live on ESPN Digital Networks. For more information on the 2024 Starry Swack Men's and Women's Basketball Tournaments presented by Buick, visit www.swack.org. And uh, Henson, as the band plays on here at Moore Gymnasium, uh, your thoughts on the first five minutes? It's a very methodical start for both teams you know two only two turnovers for both teams to start it out early foul trouble for james henderson jr after his more a hot start defensively and zion Harmon also has a foul very even scoring for both teams you know six for dyson two for ward five for hetty and then twos all around and then a three for range who ironically shot a three but we're probably going to see a the, uh, center substitution as James Henderson's definitely going to sit for at least a good chunk of the rest of this first half. Three blocks, two fouls, and six minutes for James Henderson. And Elijah Hulsaway will join his fellows on the floor. First substitution for Bethune Cookman as after the foul before the media timeout, Ubong Okon will head to the free throw stripe. He's got a decent free throw percentage for a big man at 60%. He misses the first one. Okon from Akawa Iborn, Nigeria, but played his high school ball at New Rec Prop Sports Academy in Georgia, and then started his college career at Georgia Highlands College. We also see Darrell Reed coming into the game for the first time for Alabama State. Very low start after the free throws. Yeah. The atmosphere, as always, buzzing in this building. As the Wildcats have a three-point lead. Couple of dribble handoffs, and Harmon gets a forearm to the chest and a foul called against Micah Octave. Harmon is such a funny guy to watch get fouled because he will, every time he gets fouled, it is a dramatic afterwards for the next couple of seconds. He will follow through whatever he was doing. They almost ripped the ball away. Reggie Ward takes a three and oh. knocks it down. <laughs> it kind of floated in midair as if he was confused. And the shot, shot clock, clock didn't, didn't reset, reset, but we get to talk about Reggie Ward's three-point shooting as a forward. You don't think he would be that good at those, but he's through to 30%, and he hits his eighth three of the season there. Eight for 24. Best three-point shooter by percentage on the team is Damani McIntyre. 35%, 14 for 40. Dyson defending, and he cannot stop the downhill motion of TJ Madlock. But That's hey, his look. You know, you, if you're gonna give that up, you know, don't foul. And he did a good job not to do that as the scoreboard doesn't reset. Oh, now it's, it's getting every number in the book. Now that I think is the correct score. 16 to 12, Dyson on the baseline with 10 to shoot. Hetty, short, and a nice box out by just Steven Walker to get the board for Alabama State. Doubling the Wildcats in rebounds right now. Deep three, no good. And Hetty watches that sail out of bounds. A 
And defensively, you do have to watch out for Micah Octave. Has a steal in 25 of the 27 games they played this year. Elijah Hulsaway on to play the center position. And he is wide open underneath. And he lays it in. Got <laughs> scared for a second that uh, this, uh, one of the tallest guys in the court wasn't going to make that. <laughs> well, the, the crowd at Moore Gym has a love-hate relationship with Elijah Hulsaway. Yes. Although he did have a really good game on Saturday. Here comes the screen. Madlock goes all the way and throws it to nobody on the back door cut. Wildcats in transition. Ward oh. gets fouled as he threw that one behind his head. That's a great bullet pass from Dyson. All in one motion. The ball didn't hit the ground after he caught it. He literally took it and all in, all in that one follow through gets fouled and then misses the shot. But at that point, if he had made it, it would have been an absolute circus shot behind his head with both hands. This team is no stranger to circus shots. I mean, Zion Harmon is on this team. <laughs> Reggie Ward from Riverside City College in Chicago, Illinois. One of a couple of Chicago players on this team. Jacoby Hetty, another one. Deshaun Dyson, another. All because of assistant coach Billy Garrett, who is from the Chicago area and has a lot of recruiting roots there. Wildcats were up in Chicago earlier this season and battled with Chicago State, ultimately falling by one point. A team that is moving to a conference next year for the first time. Nifty move, but it's short by Sean Smith. Put back also no good. Chicago State, after being an independent, long pass to Hetty. He backs up to the corner. Will join the NEC next season. An audible woo from the crowd as Hetty took that step back he in. He falls away! And he <laughs> almost runs out of the building after draining that one from 15 feet. As we hit the media, time out. The foul will go on Reed, but the Wildcats have come to play of 21-12. Not just a great rush album, but a fantastic scoreline for the Wildcats as well. The BCU Diamond Cats are back at Jackie Robinson Ballpark looking to continue their hot start to the 2024 season. You can catch Bethune-Cookman baseball this weekend as the Wildcats host Northwestern for a three-game series at the Jack. First pitch of the weekend set for Friday, March 1st at 7 p.m. Tickets start at just $10. Can't make it to the park? Catch all the action live on YouTube.com backslash CatEye Network. And the Wildcats are 7 of 10 from the field, and this is a team that often has long cold spells where they can't seem to buy a bucket. Not the case early on here. Yep, very, very hot start from the Wildcats. 8 for 10, 3 for 3 from the uh, beyond the arc, and, and only missing two shots from the free throw line. That They are literally, on, a, <laughs> on average right now, about as, wor about as bad from the free throw line as they are from the field as a whole. And, you know, five assists, five rebounds, and those three early James Henderson blocks really helped them early on. Yeah. Now, seven offensive rebounds for Alabama State and 10 to five, the rebounding margin overall is a concern for the Wildcats. The Alabama State has 17 field goal attempts to Bethune-Cookman's just nine. Of course, if you're knocking down seven of those nine, you're doing something pretty good. But second chance points already four nothing in favor of the Hornets. Yeah. And again, we talked about it on the keys to the game. That's their way to victory is through the glass. And it'll be an and one scenario for the sophomore from Chicago and the Wabash Valley College transfer Jacoby Hetty, the team's leading scorer at 15.7 points per game. Zion Harmon follows that up close behind with 15. And Deshaun Dyson, 13, the three-headed monster at the head of this elite Wildcats scoring attack. Yeah, but I, sometimes I forget Hetty's only a sophomore. You got two more years of him here in Moore Gymnasium. Bit of a hand check from Harmon, no call on Smith. Here's Kendall Parker handing it off. And Amar Knox in the game for the first time, gets the switch from Ward. Very quick switch, great defensive start to this possession. 10 to shoot. 
They go to the outside, three on the way, airballed it, but it came right to Parker, whose layup is no good. A third opportunity, and finally, Hulsaway comes down with it. Zion looking to run. He was looking for that cross-course pass. He goes up to him. Oh. oh, and he couldn't throw it down. The pass was a little bit too far in front of him. And then the, <laughs> the Hornets throw it away. I think they were even, they were so surprised that he missed the alley-oop that they weren't expecting the possession to come back to them so quickly. I think both teams would like to forget that the last 10 seconds ever happened and just move on. <laughs> As DJ Carter Hollinger comes into the game, had a double-digit scoring night on Saturday on his senior night. Hetty fakes from his household. Harmon, nifty move. He takes contact, and he doesn't get it to go off the rim. Yeah. He's definitely probably looking for that foul call. Ooh, little slip from Sean Smith. He maintains his dribble. And despite having eight offensive rebounds, the Hornets are on a two and a half minute scoreless streak. That's a Euro and score from Sean Smith. Not often you see that kind of a move from way out there beyond the free throw line. Yep. Euroing at the <laughs> way back there and makes a tough little shot. Hetty just takes it. Ooh. Oh, he's hot. Oh, he's hot early on. Jacoby Hetty already has 10 points. It's long two, what a, a woman's game three, but. And this second unit on the floor for Alabama State has seen the BCU lead balloon to 10 points. Smith, oh, a fancy dribble and a nice finish as nobody was covering underneath. This game's gonna be wide open, I think, on both ends. Yep. And similar to the women's team, this Alabama State team has is very deep numerically as well. Harmon fakes the pull up, drives, gets to the lane, up and under, holds away, gets the ball ripped away from him, wanted the foul. Odd man rush for Alabama State, Euro step off the glass and in. That was Amar Knox running the floor. And a quick six-point swing back the other way for Alabama State. DJ throws it to Hetty. He takes a three. Oh! oh! The net was off its moorings, and it doesn't matter. He fixed it with that deep three. Hetty's hot. Harmon seems to be hot as well. I mean, he's he's Dyson. hot on the assist numbers. Yeah. He's Dyson, got, rather. Harmon's got three assists already. Another Smith, slip. another slight slip mm. on the floor. Maybe he needs to check his shoes. Overhead pass, Parker battling with Zion, high off the glass, no good. Another triple offensive rebound possession for Alabama State. Make that four as just Stephen Walker puts it in. This is almost in the territory of unbelievability. And yet the Wildcats still have a seven point lead. Dyson jumps in, gets the foul, and will go to the line to shoot three free throws. James Harden-esque on the move from number 11. <laughs> Very funny. Sees the defender get up and just kind of, you could tell you could tell he hesitated at first and then went, oh, why not? And just goes into that shot, gets fouled. And Three now they're in the bonus. Throws. Yep, no. This is, a, this is not the women's game. Oh, this is the men's game. Bonus six. starts at seven. Whoop. We're doing those back-to-back -back can be confusing yeah. sometimes. 15 rebounds to seven for the Wildcats, 10 offensive rebounds. Because of how well the Wildcats have been shooting, there hasn't even really been a chance on the other side for the Hornets. They've just been getting their boards all on their own. Dyson hits the second, he's one of two. Zion Harmon will sit replaced by the sophomore Seneca Willoughby. And TJ Madlock is back in for Alabama State. They have missed his presence on the floor over the last couple of minutes, even though they did go on a quick 6-0 run. Dyson hits two of three, and the lead is nine. Seneca Willoughby is going to have to play some big minutes down the stretch for this Wildcats team. Yeah. Potential point guard of the future for Bethune-Cookman. Around the rim it goes to Sean Smith. Ghost screen. 
And then Knox didn't take one from way downtown. He next see no looks it to Ocon, who two-hand jams at home. <laughs> Coach Thea stretched his arms in the entire Hornets defense. Willoughby throws it up, and it's a little bit too tall for DJ. Sometime, somehow he comes down with it. He takes a runner and oh hits it. Oh, my goodness. This, this Wildcats offense has been on fuego to start this half. Smith denied. Ooh, a jab step and a deep three. It's off the front of the rim. And a steal off a pass. But it's going to go right back to the Wildcats. BCU bailed out as C.J. Hines leapt in for the steal, but his momentum carried him off the court. Been very, very back and forth to start this. Stand out. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the newest BCU Nike gear at nike.com backslash Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Make sure you are representing Bethune Cookman University Athletics to the fullest. Buy the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop. Jacoby Hetty has recovered from not the best of performances on Saturday. He has 13 points in as many minutes to start this game. Five of seven from the floor, two of two from three. And this is why they recruited him to come to the third cup for games like this. Yeah, he's been hot to start this first half as well as Dyson. Rich Ward's been solid as well. Carter Hollinger made that really tough shot and Paula Sway made that other layup. And if the one thing, because right now, score 31-22, if you've been watching this game, you weren't thinking that score. And you just were watching based on how teams have been playing. And that's because of all the extra possessions the Hornets have been getting on these the, uh, late contest offensive rebounds. The one way that the Wildcats could really pull away is that they start doing better on the board. The, obviously, the shot is there at the moment. If they can just get more shots up and stop allowing these second chance points, we could see a similar thing that, ha that happened with the women's game to the men's game. Wildcats currently getting out rebounded 15 to 8 and 10 offensive rebounds for Alabama State. But they lead at 31-22 because the shooting early has been outstanding, especially from Jacoby Hetty. Double team turnover. That's the second time that Bama State's got a turnover off of that exact trap on the half court line. Wide open for three, Madlock. That's a training shot for him. Nobody wow. was there to close out on that look. And now this trap is running. Willoughby attacks, no look pass. DJ loses the handle and it's out of bounds to the Wildcats. I believe that last was touched by Ocon as Zion Harmon gets sent to check back in as well as CJ Hines for Alabama State. And the, the Wildcats have looked a little bit confused when they go to that trap. Yep. Ocon's played 10 minutes, tied for the most minutes in the game. And one thing I would do is try to get this guy in foul trouble because obviously he's really affecting how they're doing on the boards. But not so much on the scoring front, but help, ooh, helping them defensively as the ball almost goes out of bounds. Harmon is... So his baseline, reverse layup. I don't, I don't even know how he got out of there. I mean, it's Zion does Zion things, and we should be used to that by now. <laughs> Madlock, jab step, tries to respond. Bottled up by Seneca. Octave, got oh. his shot rejected by Hulsaway. Headed the other way, and is fouled on a reach in. Yeah, not that <laughs> shooting. What a great shot blocked by Hulsaway. Didn't even have to get off of the ground, taking advantage of his height. Something that we want to see him do more. That's what? the tallest guy on yeah. this team, the sophomore out of Orlando. Next foul will put the Wildcats in the single bonus as Hulsaway goes up to collect. Zion goes to the screen. 
Pulse away back to the basket. He goes with the hook shot, oh. and it's way too strong. <laughs> Madlock runs and has his shot rejected by Willoughby. Correction, that was Hines. Shovel to the corner. Seneca Willoughby traveled. And you thought that Willoughby may just take that shot. He was open in the corner. Yeah, it just didn't work out there. Jab step, there's a little bit too much ends up traveling. Some sloppy basketball on both sides here in this first half, and there's only five minutes to go in it. The Hornets have chipped away into what was a 10-point lead. Parker against Hetty. And they'll slow it down. C.J. Hines, the junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. The transfer from Faulkner goes against his opposite number. Slips down. Deep three from Madlock. Air ball. And the crowd's going to give him some noise. And now the Wildcats need to slow it down. A couple turnovers really cost them looks off of these miscues from Alabama State. They're really face guarding Zahn. He makes a tough catch against Hines. Waits for the screen. Seven to shoot. Goes to the pick and roll. And an oh, a blocking foul and one. He didn't have his feet set. Woo! Hulsaway got away with one there, but he will go to the line for a three point play. Had someone open in the corner, too. More Jim got real worried. A love-hate relationship is the best way to describe it here. And Coach Madlock is in the ear of the official, asking why that wasn't an offensive foul. Elijah Hulsaway, not someone that goes to the free throw line very often. Only 35 attempts on the season as Damani McIntyre checks in for the first time. The third of the three players that celebrated Senior Day on Saturday. The all-time steals leader at Bethune-Cookman University. And Hulsaway makes a three-point play. Wildcats go with a little bit of a press. Zion has to hustle to catch up to Madlock. Jab step three. Front iron, no good. Elijah grabs the board. And that's what he's in there for, to grab those rebounds. Yep, especially when you have someone like Okong, who's really gonna force your smaller players and smaller forwards not really able to get those boards over him. Zion, 13 to shoot. Goes pick and roll again. Oh! oh he went for the extra pass to the corner, and it'll be BCU ball. <laughs> <laughs> the whole building said, well, why didn't you just do what you did last time? <laughs> to be fair to him, kind of had, he had an entire defender jumping into the lane that he was going to go into. And he was, and DJ was open on that last drive. But, you know. Off ball foul. I think that would take him to the bonus if it's they on. They will. It's a one and one. And it's on Kendall Parker. That'll be his first. This game has been faster than the Alabama a &M game overall, but still feels like it doesn't have much flow to it for either team. Yeah, it's been a very... It's been stop and go at certain points. Though it's been faster, we're already at almost done with halftime after how much struggling we saw to get there against Alabama A&M. The Wildcats led by eight, but that it had to come back from five down in the last 30 seconds to beat the Bulldogs on Saturday. And are putting in a decent first half performance with 4.12 to go, up 38-25. in a game that both of these teams need to win, sitting towards the middle of that Dang. conference standings and a big three for C.J. Hines. Yeah. That stops a scoreless streak of two and a half minutes for the Hornets. Dyson tries to respond in kind too strong. And Ocon there for the rebound. And a chance for a quick response from Alabama State. Hines, a deep three from straight on, in and out. 10 points the gap. Harmon, the sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland, surveys. He oh. takes a step back of his own, and that one's a little too strong. So the team's trade threes, or three attempts, rather. Bama State hits one, 
Wildcats miss one. Down the lane for the layup. Too strong for Parker. Zion really loves to run the floor. That's a tough <laughs> layup, but he spins it through. Harmon only his fourth point of the game. And a timeout on the floor as we head to, the, I believe, the final media timeout of half number one. Stay up to date with everything Bethune-Cookman Athletics by checking out the Wildcats on social media. Give BCU Athletics a like on Facebook and follow the Wildcats on Twitter and Instagram at BCU underscore athletics. For the latest on BCU basketball, follow at BCU Hoops on Twitter and Instagram. And I, I know we said it in the last game, but I want to plug it again. The great people at the Cat Eye Network team behind the BCU Hoops accounts. You want to be following them. The recap videos are top tier. The behind the scenes content is elite. So thank you, Eli and Gino and everybody who heads up that organization. Makes our jobs so much easier. Provide us with all that extra content. Yeah, make us look way cooler when they do all those highlights packages and <laughs> use our, our calls and such. But ironically, that time I came at a perfect time for Holosway, who was asking to come out of the game. Obviously, he's been guarding, uh, base guarding Nakobe for much of this game. 11 minutes played. Has had a decent outing so far. Four rebounds, five points. So. Yeah, and, and I think Holosway may get a ton of minutes today. If he is the guy that can challenge Ocon for those rebounds and prevent some of those second and third and fourth chance opportunities for Alabama State. He, he may just see the floor until he, until he fouls out and gets tired. Yeah. Because outside of him at seven feet, the Wildcats really don't have anybody that can jump with the 7-1 Ocon. I mean, you've got James Henderson at 6-9 and then DJ who sometimes can play the five at 6-6. Six, six. You've also got Yusuf Tamara at 6-9 who has played limited minutes this season as a uh, transfer. And he did Tamara play on Saturday and have one of the highlights of the game versus the Bulldogs with that no-look dime to Zion Harmon on the baseline. Yeah. And reminder, I mean, we often talk at, you know, about this Wildcats men's team. We forget how young it is in a lot of places. Zion Harmon's only a sophomore. Hetty's only a sophomore. You know, Willoughby's a sophomore as well. Uh, Reggie Ward's a junior. Tamara's a sophomore. DJ's a senior. Womack who hasn't played as much as a sophomore. And Holosway is only a sophomore, as well as James Henderson Jr. So this team will only get better next year, though it will miss DJ and Damani and... Oh, look out. McIntyre almost got a steal, but it kicked off of his leg and went out of play. Um, speaking of Yusuf Tamara, he is in the game right now, matched up against Darrell Reed. No Ocon on the floor right now. Isaiah Range has also checked back in for the Hornets. Here is Range with that three early in the game. A defender falls down. His teardrop shot is short. And DJ grabs the miss. Long pass ahead, looking for Tamara. He finds him, but his momentum carried yeah. him out of bounds. Was getting, was in a situation, position where he couldn't really get his footing down and just try to keep it in. Catch and shoot, bang, for Micah Octave. A 33% three-point shooter. Brings the gap back to nine. It's been fluctuating between 13 and seven or eight for the better part of the last five minutes. Wildcats slow it down, set up the triple screen for Zion. Catch and shoot, McIntyre short on the three. DJ flashes through for the rebound. He puts it back up and off the heel. It's oh, no good, what? but it's tipped in by Octave. Oh. Oh. An own goal for Micah Octave and the basket counts. <laughs> I'm Madlock down the lane, no good. Tamara wrestling with the rebound. Darrell Reed actually gets it and a foul. But um, we've, okay, so we had a wedgie in the first game. Now we have an own goal in the second game. More Jim is going out with a bang this in season. all of my 18 years of watching basketball, I don't think I've seen an unintentional tip without pressure. Because it would have been one thing if we had a player down there with him. I've never seen a defensive player uncontested tipped the ball back into his basket. That, that, is, that is a new one. That is one for the history books, folks. <laughs> this is Reed at the line. He's been a very interesting first half it has. of basketball. 
And he sinks the first one. Darrell Reed is a redshirt sophomore from Hammond, Indiana. Last year at Bama State, his first year at college. Only averaged 1.8 points, 1.6 rebounds in 4.6 minutes a game. Wow. More involved <laughs> this year off the bench. One and a half to go first half. Wildcats with a 10 point advantage. No look pass. McIntyre doesn't take the open three. He gives it back to Dyson, or excuse me, uh, Harmon. Zion with eight. He attacks, he floats it. It's just too strong. Offensive board for DJ. Fresh 20. Reggie Ward, catch and shoot. Oh, oh hit. it laid on the rim and fell in. Uh, two threes for Reggie Ward. That is not his game, but he made it his tonight. 66 first half timeout, Alabama State. And this may be one of the more impressive offensive first halves we've seen for the Wildcats against D1 opposition. Obviously, you take the 113 point performance against Trinity College, the 104 against Trinity Baptist into account as well. but. Almost 50 in the first half against a team that only gives up 69 points per game. Yeah, they've done a great job out the gate of just getting good looks and making tough shots. And, you know, good offense beats good defense. If you can get those consistent good looks, that can really help your team out. It also helps that they haven't been fouling on the odd defensive end, which has allowed them to get into their flow easier. It also helps that the Hornets have been off and cold from beyond the arc for a 16. And considering the Wildcats have only shot eight, but have made five compared to 16, double the attempts, but less made shots for the Hornets. It's really helped them out, especially considering how their rebounding is going. It helps that they're taking these long threes, which allows the Wildcats to have more defenders in the paint and get better angles on those shots. And checking back in on the rebounding numbers, right? There was one point where we were getting doubled up on the boards. It's now 19 all in terms of rebounding. Hines to inbound, and away we go. Amar Knox controls. Good defense by Ward. Up and under, and fouled is TJ Madlock. He, he's such a wizard with the ball, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. Stop and go. Takes the shot. Barely can see the basket from where he was and gets fouled. Madlock originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Of course, Tony Madlock a player for the Memphis Tigers and went to two NCAA tournaments and two NITs as a Memphis Tiger. And of course, was an assistant coach at Memphis for a while along with Arkansas State, UTEP, Auburn, and Ole Miss. So Coach Madlock has been around the block and now Coach Theus wants to tack it over with his team's lead. 11 with 48 to go and maybe trying to draw something up here to get a good look before the half. Yeah, I mean, get it to your guys that are hot. Heady Dyson has been hot. Ward is three for three, two for two from three, which is not what we've seen out of him all season. We've literally watched him all season. <laughs> he likes to attack the basket, but you know, he, he takes those catch and shoot threes. And I, I mentioned he's not a bad three point shooter coming into the game at 30%, but he doesn't yeah. take many. No, not a, not a volume guy whatsoever. And, I mean, I know Coach Madlock's probably still confused about this different situation. I, just, I, I wish we were able to have a camera on him because his immediate reaction was to just put his look at look at his player in utter confusion and then go back to the bench in just shock at what happened. I'm still not quite sure that happened, and I watched it. So yeah. yelled at literally. <laughs> Literally yelled at every player on his bench about that play. I don't know about what. I couldn't read his lips from this distance, but I assume it wasn't positive. Wildcats, Wildcats took an eight-point lead into the at the halftime interval on Saturday. But remember, there was a huge second-half push from Alabama and m and the Wildcats had to have some late-game heroics to win that one. Up by 11, with this likely being their last offensive possession of the first half. Ward in the high post. 
He goes up, and he got it. And that's more of his game through the contact. Now, the shot clock, I don't think we set there. Go. Yeah, no, shot clock off, 25 to go in the first half. Bama State will hold for the last shot, likely a three from either Hines or Octave is what they're setting up for. Madlock, also a decent three-point shooter. 10 seconds left. It's gonna be Hines, he rips through, he throws it off the glass. It's an offensive rebound, Octave puts it in with one second to go. So the Wildcats take an 11 point lead into the halftime break, shooting 60% from the floor and 62% from three. I talk a lot about law of averages, Henson. We got a good cushion, but we can't sit on it because we saw what happened on Saturday when we yeah. did that. And they're holding the uh, the Hornets to under 35% shooting, and that is an, and that's obviously being hindered for them by the fact that they get so many second chance opportunities as we saw early on. 12 offensive rebounds to just four for the Wildcats, but the total rebounding numbers aren't horrific. 20 to 19 is really solid. It's just making sure that they can get all those second chance points on the offensive boards that they really need to lock in on in this second half because you know they're scoring at such a rate that I, you know, you doubt that they're gonna be able to shoot 60% for an entire another half. Or we'll, <laughs> we'll take about a 10 minute break and when we come back, it's the Southeast Toyota Dealers halftime report. Until then, we'll see you in about 10.
Welcome back to more gymnasium. It's 47-36, the Wildcats with an 11-point lead at halftime over the Alabama State Hornets. It's now time for the Southeast Toyota Dealers halftime report. Let's get to those individual scoring numbers first for Alabama State. Madlock leads the way with nine. Octave has seven. Smith, six. Hines, five. Range, three. Knox has two. Walker has one, two. Ocon has just one, despite the fact that he leads the team in rebounding with four. And Reed has one. For Bethune Cookman, Hetty has 13 to lead all scores. Ward has 11 on four of four from the field and two of two from beyond the arc. Dyson has 10, two of four from the field, but five of seven from the free throw line, courtesy of that three shot penalty he incurred. Halsaway has five, Harmon has four, and Carter Hollinger has four. Now, if I told you before the game, Henson, that Zion Harmon would have four points and four, re uh, four assists in the first half, and the Wildcats would be up by 11, would you believe me? <laughs> Not really, but I mean, I, I would have heard the four assists and been like, it's probably close. <laughs> but up 11, no. I mean, we've had an excellent, excellent, excellent shooting performance to start this game out. 60% from the field, 62% from the three point line. They're almost worse from the free throw line than from the field at the moment. That's it, it, insane. Yeah, and, and law of averages, right? You expect it to come down a little bit. And I also expect Alabama State and Coach Madlock to race out of the blocks in the second half. We saw it on Saturday with Alabama A&M. They blitzed us at the start of the second half. I expect a response from the Hornets here. But the thing is, if the Wildcats can go with them and ride and drive with them, they'll keep that lead. We know this team likes to go out and score. The problem was against A&M, they just couldn't get out of their own way a little bit. If they could get that scoring flow, and I'm not saying match them shot for shot, but as long as they can keep a lead, they should be good heading into those final minutes. Yeah, and even though the Wildcats did win the game, they were outscored by 10 points in the second half. So you got to be able to go with it. Also, I expect that Alabama State will start to press harder. They did have a little bit of success when they went for that trap against the midcourt line, especially against Harmon and Willoughby. You get them to panic a little bit with the ball. I think they'll lean more on that in the defensive end. Yeah. Defense has done excellent to start out this game for the Wildcats. And if you looked at the score, you'd probably think maybe the roles were reversed. Maybe the Wildcats were one of the best defenses in the SWAC and the Hornets were one of the best offenses just because of how excellent they've held them. Four of 16 from beyond the arc. I mean, 25% from there, 35% as a whole. If it wasn't for the rebounding woes on the offensive end, this game would probably be a 20-point lead for the yeah. Wildcats. Well, the Wildcats, again, not the best rebounding team in the SWAC. They're eighth in total rebounds per game and eighth in defensive rebounds per game. And they're going up against a team that is first in rebounds and first in offensive rebounds. You, you have to expect some sort of lopsided score there, but yeah. they're only getting out-rebounded totally by one, but on the offensive glass, it's 12 to four. Second chance points, nine to five. That's not as big of a gap as you might have thought with those rebounding numbers. Um, Alabama State's only turned the ball over three times. BCU's turned the ball over five times. Got to keep those turnover numbers down because the, the Hornets don't turn the ball over that much. Um, points off turnovers, 10 to six in favor of the Hornets. Points in the paint, 20 to 18 in favor of the Hornets. And really, it's just been that three-point shooting and shooting from the floor in general that has given the Wildcats the lead. Yeah, the, just great shooting. I mean, it... it it was, it's funny because we saw as it was happening, we were like, oh, that, you know, thinking, oh, that shot's not going to go in. But those tough shots kept going down. And we've seen it happen to both the men's and women's teams. Sometimes the team will come in here and they'll just make those tough shots. And it's like, good offense beats good defense. If you can make that shot, you make the shot. You know what I mean? So it makes it harder on the defense without, especially without fouling, because it's like, man, what else can we do? other than foul. Speaking of fouling, only five Wildcat fouls in that first half, and James Henderson Jr. is the only one with more than one foul. He picked up two fouls, three blocks, and one assist in six minutes of play and did not see the floor outside the first six minutes. Yep, center by committee really is the name of the game for the Wildcats. Tamara, Holisway, and uh, Henderson Jr. have been sharing the minutes for much, if not all, of the season. 
at that center position. And Elijah Halsaway, who had five points and four rebounds in the first half, will start at center. He's the only change for the Cats. It's also Dyson, Hetty, Zion, and Ward out there with him. Ward, mid-ranger. And off the back iron, he misses the first shot of the half. I expect a lot more drives to the hoop for Alabama State. They did get a lot of love in the paint. Here's the screen from Ocon. They go back out to Octave. Nice close down to prevent the three. Deep one from Madlock, misses it short. Yeah, but the three hasn't really been there. Dyson wants to run. He goes all the way to the cup, misses it short. The tip in from Holsaway is not there. And Ocon grabs the board, throws it ahead to Madlock. He's one-on-one -on -one with Hetty. Throws the lob, That's and the <laughs> jam is no good off the back iron. Two missed alley-oops in this game, both on the same rim. So maybe let's not try to do that for either team. Well, nobody scored in the opening two minutes. Not, not for lack of trying. Yeah, both, both teams had excellent opportunities. Harmon gets a reach-in foul called against Isaiah Range. And that's the first foul of the second half. It's an interesting setup on that last play. Right? They, they do the triple screen across the top of the key, and then Zion ghosts it and goes left and doesn't take the screen. Yeah, but I think that's Range's third foul. I have to wait for it to come across a ticker. He sits, though, regardless. Yep, the third. Harmon on the wing. He gets the screen from Holsaway. He splits a double team. He fakes the pass, and he misses the layup. Still both teams scoreless in the second half. And if the Wildcats are going to win this game, it's going to have to be done on this end of the floor. Yep. They've done a good job to start out outside of that one possession where they probably should have given up some points. Mismatch. Holsaway matched up on Knox. Knox. Gets the defender to slide past him and rolls in the first points of half number two. Did a decent job of trying to help there, did Holsaway, without going in too hard and fouling him. But, you know, sometimes you're just going to give up those. And the Wildcats have slowed the pace way down as Harmon walks across the time stripe. They go to Ward. Defender falls down, blocking foul. That's the second time we've seen that almost charge, but the feet just barely not set. Reggie Ward <laughs> took one dribble and just ran straight at him and bowled him over, getting that blocking foul call. The Wildcats are scoreless, as we said, to start this half out. And only two points for Alabama State. The lead is nine. Ward controls, lots of battles. The ball is poked into the backcourt. Eight to shoot, and Zion is 90 feet away. Five to shoot. He runs into the front court. Three. He floats it up. It grazes off the front rim. No good. A terrific effort by Harmon, but nothing doing. Three in transition for Octave. Short. Offensive board for Hines. Put back. Good. And we expected this. Here come the Hornets. Yep. And at a certain point, you got to wonder. Timeout, Coach Theus, and he is not happy. And at a certain point, you got to wonder if Alabama State is going to. Oh. <laughs> we heard. You can almost hear him all the way up here. Up he is here, laying right. into his players. A slow start for the Wildcats. 0 of 5 from the floor to start half number two. Visit your local Southeast Toyota dealers or explore Toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. Come be a part of BCU Athletics and support the Cat On Network. If you or your business is interested in partnering with us here on the Cat Eye Network, you can reach out to the Wildcat Athletic Communications Department at BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. That's BCU Sports Info at Cookman.edu. Lots of opportunities to get involved with the Cat Eye Network, baseball and softball rounding into form here as we hit the end of February and the start of March. Yes. Of course, baseball this weekend against Northwestern out of the Big Ten. Evanston, Illinois. Uh, going to be a very fun game to have someone, especially from, you know, the prestigious Big Ten Conference, which really isn't 10 anymore, especially as conferences realign due to football shenanigans. Going to yeah. be about the Big 16, but we're not talking about 
football or the Big Ten anymore. We're talking about Wildcats basketball, and they've been really cold to start out this second half. Just haven't been able to get the looks that they were getting the, in the first and have already taken their shooting percentage down to 51%, up from an astonishing 63. Not as if Alabama, uh, Alabama State, rather, has been shooting crazily well to start the second half out. They're two of five and 0 for two for three. But when you're, when you're over, it makes everybody else's stats look better. Wildcats got to break that offensive snide. And as I mentioned, the defensive shift from the Hornets is ball pressure. Lots and lots of ball pressure. And you can see it right there as Hetty falls over and turns the ball over. Here is Madlock. He is fouled. And a chance to make this a five-point game. And the Wildcats are going to have to come up with a solution pretty quickly against this aggressive ball pressure from the Hornets. Yeah. yeah. Madlock misses on the first. On the season, he is 76.9% from the charity stripe. Last year's SWAC Newcomer of the Year, TJ Madlock, gets the second one. He's had big performances this season, including a 30-piece against Prairie View for a career high. Long pass, what a pulls ball. away, rattles it down. And that finally breaks the Wildcats' duck. They were 0 of 5 previously. Hines against Harmon. Hines, the junior out of Atlanta. The transfer from Faulkner kicks to Octave. Wide open three. Too strong. Another offensive rebound for Ocon, and he is fouled as the ball was poked away. Another issue for Bethune Cookman is you gotta stay out of foul trouble, especially with your center rotation as small as it is. Yeah. And Henderson already having two fouls. Three from the corner short. Hulseway tips it, but just straight out to Knox. And it's a fourth chance on this possession for the Hornets. And, a, uh, and I, as I said earlier, I, I'm not 100% sure why Alabama State is still forcing these threes when they've gotten so much luck in the paint. Ocon puts the ball on the floor. Reggie Ward says, I'll take that. Well, that might be part of the reason. The defensive intensity of the Wildcats down low. Dyson behind the back, step back. James Harden style, no. And those tough buckets that you mentioned the Wildcats were hitting in the first half just have not been falling here in the opening couple of minutes of the second. Tip in no good, another chance, and Ocon will go to the line. And Reggie Ward picks up his second foul as DJ Carter Hollinger comes in. Carter Hollinger, time for the team lead and assist with Hulsaway as we hit the first media timeout. Southeast Toyota Dealers is a proud supporter of Bethune-Cookman basketball. Visit your local Toyota dealers or explore toyota.com today and take advantage of the deals on our full line of vehicles. And if you're Coach Theus right now, what are you drawing up, especially offensively, to try and get off this slide? Yep, you got to get it to your players that really haven't gotten a chance in this second half. Hetty, other than that turnover, really hasn't touched the ball. Reggie Ward hasn't really got a good look either. Neither had, I mean, it's just a struggle offensively. Harmon hasn't been, you know, his usual self to start it out, at least scoring-wise. He's been great uh, playmaking-wise, five assists. But you just got to figure out, get it to people who are going to, you know, try to refresh the offense a little bit as the Alabama State halftime team talk obviously worked pretty well for the defensive side of things. One of seven. And you got to provide off-ball help, right? If, if they're being trapped on aggressively, somebody's got to come to the ball and give the guy being trapped a, a chance to pass it out. Yeah. They can't just play iso ball if they're going to be pressured like that. Uh, the off-ball movement will allow for that iso ball to actually start working again because teams will be so... You, you force them to be so focused on all that off-ball movement that now all of a sudden you call that ISO and now they're looking, oh, well, there might be an outlet pass or a back door somewhere that they have to worry about. Octave will go to the free throw line. 
Second trip of the half for the Hornets. They were one of two their first trip. Wildcats still have not gone to the free throw line with almost five minutes gone by in half number two. And Hanson, we talked about it a lot. This is setting up to be a very similar game to the A&M game on Saturday where the Wildcats had a good first half and oh, an offensive rebound of a missed free throw after some craziness. Octave open for a three, got it. So how many extra possessions is that in the last, what, two? Possessions, probably about six, six, seven. Zion drives, now he's trapped, gets it to DJ. Back to Zion, fakes the three, escape dribble, now takes the three, short. And Hetty can't secure the board. And the Wildcats, 0 for two from three, and 0 for eight from the floor, or sorry, one for eight from the floor, their only bucket being a hulse away tip in. As cold as you can get. Nice drive and kick. The extra pass for three. And it's a one point game. 49 48. All the momentum to the visitors. Dyson, step back baseline. Yes. And the air has gone completely out of this building. Yeah, a very hard shift in allowing this. Hornets lead to kind of storm Hornets, uh, rather the Wildcat lead to kind of get a race. Now you're only looking at a three-point lead. Catch and shoot for Hines with a defender in his face. And the Hornets pressure all the way up the floor. Hetty attacks. That's an offensive foul. No block. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I have that's... fallen for one of the classic blunders is don't anticipate the referee's no, call no. until they actually make it. Third foul on the Hornets in the half. The Wildcats made that separation in the first with the second unit for Alabama State on the floor and crucially, Ocon off the floor. Dyson against Knox falling away. No, Hetty wrestling for it underneath, puts it back up. A third opportunity, a fourth. Finally falls for Hetty. And that's a look for the Wildcats like the Hornets have been getting all game. Some that they're not used to, especially to start this game out. Just getting those second chance opportunities. As now, now the crowd start getting behind him. Madlock, mid-ranger, no. Ocon in a war down low and he gets the foul called on him. It's against Reggie Ward, his third. And Ocon now comes out, replaced by Darrell Reed. Madlock inbounds, fast correction, that's Reed who lays it in. Back to a three-point game. The game in the second half has slowed to a snail's pace. <laughs> As Coach Diaz is trying to explain the play to his players. Long three from Harmon. Long rebound, battled and won by DJ somehow, and it's poked out by Octave, and the Wildcats maintain it. Every board feels like the Great War between these two teams. And right now, the battle is being won by Alabama State 32-27. Yep, the law of averages, as you said earlier, is really affecting the Wildcats, 47%. But they haven't been getting the best looks. I mean, that Harmon shot certainly isn't high percentage, even as good as he is. Ward, 10 to shoot. Heady, top of the key. Now seven, takes a moon shot off the rim. And the Wildcats are just settling for these low percentage deep threes, not penetrating the defense, not attacking, especially with Ocon on the bench. Yeah. And Alabama State with a chance to tie it up here. Oh, how quickly the tables turn. Kick to the corner. Smith. 
And a foul called as Smith lost the ball. Wildcats already with five fouls called on them, so two more puts the Hornets in the bonus. Still 12 minutes to go in the game. And now it's the Hornets slowing it down. Ball poked away, will stay with the visitors from Alabama. Sean Smith. They're in the headband, the junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. And his freshman year at John A. Logan College. One of two players with headbands on the court. This is the other one, Lamar Knox. Two to shoot, Madlock, deep three. Oh, he banked it in, and it's a tie game. The, all the low percentage shots are going the way of Alabama State, where in the first half, they were going the way of the Wildcats. Yep. 14 to 6 start for the Hornets compared to what we had going in the first half, which was all wild pass. Dyson, 10 to shoot. The Wildcats haven't gotten the ball inside the three point line. They do now. Ward twisting, turning, and that is shot rejected by Darrell Reed. And it takes us to our second media timeout with the Wildcats just two to shoot when we come back on an inbounds play. The 2024 Starry Swack Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Buick returns to the Magic City on Wednesday, March 13th through Saturday, March 16th as the league's top eight teams on both sides look to bring home championship titles with two NCAA tournament berths on the line. This year's tournament is scheduled to be held in downtown Birmingham at Bartow Arena with all 14 men's and women's tournament games set to be broadcast live on the ESPN Digital Network. For more information on the 2024 Starry Swack Men's Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Buick, visit www.swack.com. And let's take a look at some of the stakes, right? We look at the conference standings. Bethune Cookman, fifth place right now at 8-6 with a tiebreaker over Jackson State. Then Alabama State, Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Alabama and A&M all at 7-7 seven seven for those last couple of spots. Prairie View A&M, two games behind them. So really, it's going to come down to Bama State, Pine Bluff, and Alabama A&M to kind of determine those last couple of seeds. And if Bethune Cookman isn't careful, they could fall all the way down. Because remember, they have such a tough schedule the last three games of Grambling State and Southern and then Fam you to close it out. Yeah, I mean, the important thing for them is to win this game. You know, you don't, you have the two best teams in the SWAC coming up. You know that. You then have to go on the road to play your bitter rivals in a game that if you don't play well here could really mean, do you have anything after to look forward? Two seconds to get a shot up here after the media timeout for the Wildcats. It's Dyson from the baseline, falling away, and it's a shot clock violation as that caught nothing but air. Marching Wildcats in the building, trying to fire up this crowd. Seneca Willoughby and Amadi McIntyre will check in for Bethune Cookman. As Harmon and Hetty both take a seat. Tough start for the second half for them. Only three field goals for the Wildcats. That shooting 17.6% in the second half is compared to 60 in half number one. And they have an 11-point lead that has closed up quickly. And that's a foul, and Amar Knox is going to go to the line to try and give the Hornets the lead, and that's the fourth foul on Reggie Ward as Jacoby Hetty's going to come straight back in. <laughs> Isaiah Range has three fouls for Alabama State. He is currently not on the floor. Nobody else has more than two on both sides. And it's the lead. The first lead since it was 3-1 for Alabama State as they take a lead 54-53. But hey, there's still 11 minutes left. That's a lot of time in basketball. Second one, no good. Big opportunity here for Seneca Willoughby 
and Damani McIntyre to try and pull the Wildcats back in this game. They're only down one. It feels like they're down by 105. The way the pendulum has swung right now. Hetty takes the step back, misses it long, and a foul against DJ Carter Hollinger. And that puts him as a bonus. And now Alabama State will be shooting the rest of the way with 11 minutes left. Yes, they're not that great from the free throw line tonight, just seven of 12, but you give them so many opportunities. Free throw shooting kept the Wildcats in the game on Saturday, and it may be the reason that the game goes the other way tonight. Wildcats scoreless over the last two minutes and 55 seconds. Darrell Reed, the Indiana native, sinks the front end of a one and one. Reed misses the second, and the Wildcats just down by two. Nowhere to go for Willoughby. Dyson goes back the other way. His defender slides by, and another three is no good, but Hetty is there for the tip in. This the ball, the three ball hasn't been there. Wildcats are only shooting 16% before that shot and tip in, so. And 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. Sean Smith runs the point, and the ball goes off a foot. It's a steal for McIntyre. He finds the trailing DJ for the chin, 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 chin. And maybe that's what gets this Wildcats crowd fired up, is a steal from McIntyre and a timeout called by Coach Madlock, and he is laying into Sean Smith, who carelessly turned that one over and led to the odd man rush the other way. Yeah. Very, a couple of very animated coaches back to back from both Alabama A&M and Alabama State games. Yep, and then the Wildcats back in the lead, 57-55, and I think the Wildcats will take a back and forth game down the stretch, because that means that they've gotten their offense in some kind of rhythm, but of course, it's the senior, his last home game in this building, comes up with his 170th career steal as a Wildcat. Defensive maestro is what he is. Yeah. Jacoby Hetty with those couple of tip-ins is up to 17 points. Madlock leads the way for Alabama State with 13. Of course, Alabama State tonight playing without the services of Eric Coleman, the senior out of Buford, Georgia, and South Plains College. He was injured in the first game against Bethune-Cookman, and he's been out since then. And it's gonna come down to, as so many basketball games do, Henson, who hits the clutch shot, who makes the clutch steal. Yep. And who gets and that last all-important run? There's still 10 minutes left. Usually we've seen, you know, the runs go on for a good three to four minutes. And depending on who... Oh, offensive foul, illegal screen. I'm not sure the Wildcats were looking for that, but they will take it. The call is going to go against C.J. Hines as he blew up the steal attempt from McIntyre. Turnover number, number six on the Hornets. Both teams have that many turnovers. D.J. goes to work, steps back. He had his shot altered by Reed. And again, a possession with no extra pass. Stepping into a transition triple and rimming it down is Kendall Parker. The lead is one for the Hornets. McIntyre in all kinds of trouble, but DJ bails him out. It's a little spin cycle in place. Didn't really have anywhere to go until DJ cut. Did a good job to not, you know, lose the ball or do something stupid with it.
into the paint. Lots of contact, and the Wildcats have the ball. Hetty asks for the screen, gets it from McIntyre. Nothing there, though. Wildcats will once again slow this down to a snail's pace. Looking for one good opportunity. Hetty spots the mismatch. He goes for it and he blows the layup. Asking for the foul not given. Transition opportunity for Knox. No good. Hetty down the floor. He's one on one with Octave. Throws it up behind his head and gets the roll off the glass. Through tough contact. Makes a circus layup. Kyrie Irving asked the layup there. And again, he's asking for the foul as well. Didn't get it. All the way to the baseline goes Knox, hounded by Dyson. Octave, defender in the air, mid-ranger drops it in. As the teams trade buckets, back and forth we go, eight minutes left. A win for the Wildcats would see them go to nine and six in conference play, and a game in hand for the five seed in the tournament. Dyson, turnaround jumper, too strong. Nobody in a gold jersey can test the layup. No. DJ tried to, but got boxed out so well, he just went back on defense. Cats by one. Alabama State, if they were to lose this game, would fall to seven or to seven and eight. And a block by Seneca Willoughby. An unlikely defensive stand for him. Dyson gets the feed, goes up and under. Oh, but he missed it. The ball's loose on the ground. The long arms of Hetty get it. Hetty spins, throws it up, oh. and he gets fouled. This game has been topsy-turvy over the last 25 seconds, and Hetty is helped to his feet by his teammates as we hit the under-8 media timeout. The Diamond Cats are back at Jackie Robinson Ballpark, looking to continue their hot start to the 2024 season. You can catch Bethune Cookman baseball this weekend as the Wildcats host Northwestern for a three-game series at the Jack. First pitch of the weekend is set for Friday, March 1st at 7 p.m. Tickets start at just $10. Can't make it to the park? Catch all the action live on YouTube.com slash Network. Nike is the official outfitter of the Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Gear up on the latest PCU Nike gear at Nike.com backslash Bethune Cookman Wildcats. And make sure you are representing Bethune-Cookman University Athletics to the fullest. Buy the latest BCU gear online at the Bethune-Cookman online store. Go to bcuathletics.com and click on shop to find the newest BCU clothing and apparel. That's bcuathletics.com and click on shop. And after this media timeout, Henson, the Wildcats are going to the free throw line for the first time in this half. Already eight free throws for the Hornets. I mean... That for this past couple of minutes, the refs really had that. swallowed their whistle for both teams. No one was really getting a call. But, you know, after a lot of tough drives, you know, free throw opportunity here for Dyson. And they'll be looking and needing to really score these to kind of get the flow back, get the blood pumping for the offense. Once again, thank you to those of us joining us on the Cat Eye Network for our final home basketball broadcast of the year. Whether you've been with us the whole way throughout the season, a fan of an opposing team, or just someone who likes college basketball, we appreciate your patronage all season long. You can subscribe to the Cat Eye Network on YouTube for all things Bethune-Cookman University Athletics. It'll be Jacoby Hetty to the line. He's got a game high 19 on 8 of 14 shooting from the floor. 2 of 3 from beyond the arc and a game high 8 rebounds. So two more boards for him and he's in double double territory. And the first one rims out. It feels like there's been a lid on this basket the entire night. Because Bama State didn't really have much success down this end, and neither of the Wildcats. Yeah, this, this basket has some on it. <laughs> Got the second one, though. Wildcats stretch their lead to just two. But they have forced two consecutive 
Alabama State turnovers. Here's C.J. Hines. Hetty switches on to him. Kendall Parker, the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama, and Carver High School. Gives it off to Madlock, baseline. Muscles it up, no good, but a late what? call. As the gym and Coach Theus in particular is incensed, they're gonna get McIntyre for his second foul and send Madlock to the free throw line. Oh, and a little dog. Little after between Willoughby and, <laughs> and Coach Madlock is all the way on the floor past the coach side court logo. Between Willoughby and pretty much the entire Alabama State team. Madlock, the junior, preseason second team all SWAC, SWAC newcomer of the year last year. Set up to be potentially the talisman of a team that is making a SWAC championship push both this year and next year, gets one of two from the line. Ron Harmon's back on the floor. Reggie Ward, remember, a crucial piece of this Wildcat offense. 11 points, but four fouls. He's been on the bench for the last five or so minutes. Harmon dances. Harmon drives. He kicks. Willoughby, five to shoot. Back to Zion. He fakes. He gets into the paint, and he scoops it up, and it hits the rim and is no good. It's out of bounds, and the Wildcats will control it with 20 fresh seconds on the clock. Last touched by Madlock. And I think the first and second halves have been to each team, how each team wants to play. First half is very wildcat centric, very up-tempo, a lot of scoring, a lot of back and forth. Second half, much more defensive, 25 to 15. And, and a good chunk of those points for the Hornets were on threes, because they're shooting only 44%. But they have four threes in the second half. They throw it up the lob, and Hetty was being held, so he will go to the line. Got blocked in midair. Can't really do that. <laughs> I think Coach Theus is arguing that that should be an intentional foul. And it's not even going to be a shooting foul, as the Wildcats will have a baseline in. I'm not sure how, you, how that one works. Yeah, I'm, because... It, if a player was in the air and it wasn't, you know what? <laughs> DJ, one-on-one, -on -one, gets his shot batted out of the air by Reed. One-point lead for the Wildcats. 5.49 to go in a game that both of these teams need desperately. Both of them play Grambling State and Southern for two of their last three games, and then their rivals for the other game. Ooh. Oh, falling over is Parker. Zion controls. Will he attack? Yes. He fades away. Heel and down. An uncharacteristic turnover by Parker there. The ninth of the game, sorry, the eighth of the game for Alabama State. And little things like that may decide this one. Three on the way, way left. And an air ball from Hines. And the crowd's gonna let him know about it. And Coach Madlock was convinced there was contact on the ball. Isaiah Range back in for the Hornets. He has three fouls does the senior from Cedar Hill, Texas, and the transfer from Tarleton State. Carter Hollinger, top of the key, high on, Zion, screen and three and short. Madlock sizing up Dyson. He'll give it to Knox. Another Memphis native on this team. Knox fades away, Ooh. in and out. Unlucky. Been a tough game for both teams. And a Neither team has consistently hit that mid-ranger. 
The clock ticks down under 4.20 to go. Still a one possession game. Hetty with 13. Now with 10. McIntyre on the other way. Harmon with five. Harmon drives, puts it up, off the glass, no good. And are they gonna say it's a shot clock violation because it never hit the rim? Yes. And I think they're gonna review it. Nope, just immediate timeout. So that's a tough one for the Wildcats. Since they've had, done that a couple of times in this game, right? Where they just kind of wait too long to trigger their action. Yeah, you just had the ball, you have all that shot clock, and though 30 seconds seems like a long time, when you have to get it across the court, and then you have to set up whatever you're doing, it kind of goes way quicker than you expect it to, and that's why we end up with Zion Harmon having to take that tough shot. Wildcats coming up next. They go to Southern, a game they won here in overtime all the way back on the 15th of January, and then they go to Grambling State, a game they lost here by 10 that same weekend, and then they'll close it out in the Florida Classic at Florida A&M up in Tallahassee on the 9th. And then after that, it's on to hopefully the SWAC tournament where the Wildcats will look to win their first ever SWAC tournament game. Neither men's nor women's team since they moved to the SWAC in 2021 has won a tournament game. Gonna be very interesting to see, especially if, you know, how teams go out and depending on the results here and later in the season for other teams and the Wildcats included, where they will be playing. Rather, who will they be playing? Yeah. Obviously, they'll be in Birmingham, wow. but. If the season ended today, it would be a third game between Bethune-Cookman and Alcorn State. Alcorn won by three here on ESPN and then at home in a convincing win, 69 to 54. And that's a matchup that the Wildcats may want to avoid in round one. Yeah, Alcorn has been their kryptonite this season. Alabama State down by three with four even to go. And on the ball, Amar Knox, a redshirt freshman. Played nine games last year before redshirting most of the year. Madlock, long pass, zip to the corner, three, no. Offensive rebound is there for the tip-in for Octave. This one is gonna come down to the last seconds and it may be who gets the ball last has a chance to win. Carter Hollinger drives, gives up the dribble, gets it to Harmon on the baseline. He backs up, step back, rattles down. We talk about who's gonna make that clutch shot even though Harmon's not had the best of games, only six points. The Mayfield of the ball will, might go into his hands in a late game scenario. Yep. Big screen to get Knox free. And now uh, Madlock, deep three from straight on, left. Zion the rebound. He wants the run. There's a complete mismatch down low on it as Harmon was guarding the 7 1. Zion, big step back. No. Long rebound, push to range. Zion feeling himself maybe a little bit too much there. Madlock just holding it at the top of the key. Trying to help his dad's team to a much needed win. Kick out, knocks deep triple, too strong. And Hetty secures the board, his 10th of the game and it's a double-double. Yep. And it's Jacoby. a very fast end of game scenario considering how close this game is. We're already under two minutes. It's only a three point difference. Hetty pulls up, got it. Two point, a two score game rather. 150 left. Looks like they want to call a timeout and they do. The Wildcats, two big buckets 
to go up two scores, one by Harmon, one by Hetty. It's the top two players all season long. You gotta go to your top guys in crunch time, Henson. Yeah, I mean, you they went the ball into who you'd expect it to go to. Hetty and Harmon who both make those tough shots and make them matter. We've really seen in the second half this kind of shift away from the offensive rebounding that made it so hard and kept Alabama State in the game in that first half. And Ocon's been out there, but he's been sort of a non-factor, not because of anything crazy defensively. The Wildcats have just done a better job of getting those rebounds. I will check second half rebounding here shortly. But Eddie and Dyson both team lead with 34 minutes. Just 30 for Madlock is the lead for Alabama State. Much more rotated team. Tamara only played eight minutes, Dan Henderson only played six, and Hollis Wiss played 17. Second half, Alabama State has outscored Bethune Cookman 27 21. And they have out rebounded the Wildcats 22 to 20. But the Wildcats have nine offensive rebounds in the second half to the Hornets, seven. But I've only converted 10 second chance points to the Hornets, 19. Yeah. So 19 of their 27 points have come off of second chance points in the second half. And that, that's their game plan. Crash the glass, get extra looks. Big defensive stand right here. 143 to go. Wildcats up by five. Octave takes a three, misses it. Harmon, the shortest guy on the floor, grabs the rebound. Hokan was right there. Seven foot one, couldn't get it out of his reach. One and a half left. The worst thing the Wildcats could do right now is turn it over. Yep. As Coach Diaz almost runs on the court. Deshaun Dyson cradles it. Steps back, takes a three, in and out. That would have been the potentially the dagger. Madlock all the other way. The other way, a foul. I think the block was clean, but I think they have it on. They do have it on Dyson underneath for holding. Dyson picks up only his second foul. The Wildcats not in foul trouble, really, outside of Reggie Ward, who has four. And we may see him in short order here to try and shore up in the last minute and seven. Madlock's first is good. He has to make this one here to make it a one-score game with a minute seven left. The Wildcats have two timeouts. The Hornets have one. Madlock's second is good. Three-point game, timeout Bethune-Crookman. 107 left. And if the Wildcats, like best case scenario for the Wildcats here is you take most of the shot clock down and make a bucket. Yeah. Making it a two score game again with 30 seconds left. And then you gotta play the foul game. And the Wildcats have not been great at the free throw line tonight under 70%, but the Hornets just 61% from yeah. the foul line. Tonight. No one's been good from the free throw line tonight. You know, you got a minute seven left, get the ball down court, try to take as much time off for your possession as you can and get a good look. You don't need a three, you're up three. You just need a solid look here. And then, depending on how much time is left, if you can get a defensive stop or they make a two on the other end, then you get fouled and then you foul. I would say this for the Wildcats. They have to get the ball into the paint or at least beyond the free throw line. Yep. They cannot have another possession where one of the guards walks around for 30 seconds and takes a long three. No. Like, the ball has to move. You've got to force the defense to commit. Get open looks that way. It has to be what happens here on this possession. Yeah. And if you're going to take that long three, set it up. You know, don't just have somebody dribble. And if you know you're going to give them that long three, have your players in positions to crash as soon as that ball hits. Here we go. Full court press from the Hornets. Zion gets into the front court, almost loses the handle, and forces Coach Theus to call his last time out. That could be huge. Try, get, at least gets past the front, past the half court line. 
Just a minute left, took seven seconds off. And you had to, right? Yep. It's the same scenario where they trapped Harmon in the corner. And he's turned the ball over a couple times tonight when faced with that pressure. The only thing he really could have done, he didn't have a, a somebody there over there to help him. So the really only thing he could have done was maybe throw it off of a defender, and you don't want to risk that in this clutch of a situation. So just call that timeout. You have for a reason. You've got to hope that you get this score now on this possession, though. Now you really can't afford to go down. This is the most important possession of the ball game right here. Wildcats up three, 60 ticks exactly left on the clock. 60 ticks left in more gymnasium this season. We've uh, started with volleyball all the way back in August, and we are here now on February 26th, 2024. After tonight, the gym goes dark until volleyball picks back up again with the start of a new calendar year. You only have one chance to make a lasting impression in front of these fans, and whatever happens in the next 60 seconds will likely be what the fans in the building right now remember about this team going forward. Yep. Will it be clutch shooting here later? Will it be another situation where a cold streak really hampered the, a good Wildcats performance in that first half? Got to get the ball in here cleanly. They do to Dyson. The ball is pressured. Harmon will drain the clock. 16 on the shot clock, 50 on the game clock. No timeouts for the Wildcats. One for the Hornets. Zion attacks, dribbles, goes left. Dyson goes to the paint, had his shot blocked. I think the shot was blocked. 35 seconds left, three point game. Madlock controls it. Timeout Alabama State, and they take their last one. Four, uh, six second difference, shot clock to game clock. The building wanted a foul. It was not forthcoming. They got a good look. Yeah, got the look they wanted, but just couldn't convert it. You know, that's that interior defense. That's that, you know, best in the swag defense going right there. Just absolutely stopped him at the last possible second. And he really did it at the last possible second because if that ball started dropping in, that would have been goaltending. Yeah. So the Wildcats up by three. 30 seconds left. Neither team has a timeout. So now, if Alabama State gets a three, the Wildcats will have basically no time yeah. to run down the floor and put a shot up because they used their last timeout in desperation. But and it will have to be a three attempt from Alabama State. You don't want to bank on a bucket and a foul. Yeah. The best case scenario, obviously, is either getting a turnover off of this inbounds or the Hornets take all the time off their shot clock and miss, and then you get the board, leaving them with no timeouts and only about <laughs> six, seven seconds to do everything. This building is going to get loud. Trying to cheer on their Wildcats to one last win. The ball goes in. It's over the head of everybody. Trap in the corner. Here's range. 26 to go. He finds Madlock. It may be him that takes the final shot. It might also be CJ Hines. Hines sizes up Dyson. Eight to shoot. He's hounded. It's Madlock. He's fouled. What? Wow. And that's double bonus, so two free throws coming for Tony Madlock, or TJ Madlock, rather. But now the Wildcats, even if he makes both, will be up one with yeah, 10 with seconds 10 left. Seconds. If he misses these, all of a if sudden misses, it's a genius play. Well, if he misses at least one yeah. on the game, he is six of eight from the line on the season. 76.9%, the first one goes down. It's a two-point game. 
and Zion Harmon's going to check back in. You want your best free throw shooters on the floor if you're Bethune Cookman. And Zion certainly is that. Yeah. One shot left. Do you intentionally miss here and try to get the rebound? It's good. One point BCU lead. Ten seconds left. No timeouts for anybody. Wildcats got to get the ball in quickly and don't turn it over. Yeah. The Hornets will definitely be looking for a quick turnover and a, a chance at a conversion. And Here we go. It's Zion. He's trapped. He's fouled. And it is going to be a one and one because it's only the single bonus. And that's, you know, that early not getting the drive they needed early. And those foul calls really are going to matter here. It's now, you know, obviously it's a one right. and one. Now they get the best rebounders in. Ocon is in. Range is in. But the important thing to note is they don't have time. Because on a, on a miss, you cannot allow the Wildcats to get the ball back. The yeah. Wildcats won't even attempt it. It's a one and one for Zion. He got the first one. Two-point game. Can't teach clutch. And now... Now Hetty will go in for the minuscule chance of maybe grabbing a board. Or a tip-in or something of that nature. It's good. Front rim, back rim, and down. Back to a three-point game. 8.9 to go. No timeouts for either team. Zion sits back down. <laughs> This is the most important moment, possibly, of the season for the Wildcats. The ball goes in. It's C.J. Hines. He's fouled. He's fouled. No shots. And he'll shoot two with 6.5 to go. More Jim didn't recognize it. <laughs> Immediately confused, but but you could see three. You could see Coach Theus telling foul, foul, foul before the play started. Yep. You're up three late. General rule of thumb. They can't hit a three if you don't let them go to the three-point line. They don't have timeouts. They have to foul you. It's good. Two-point game. 70-68. The Wildcats were on pace for 100 after the first half, where they scored 47. They've been held to just 23 in this second half. This is massive. It's a make. One point game again, 70-69. They gotta get the ball in. Harmon makes the catch. He is fouled. Okay. A minute to get fouled. 5.2 seconds left. And again, Zion Harmon steps to the free throw line. Wouldn't want to be in his shoes. And it's a one and one again, because that's only the eighth team foul on Alabama State. Lots of substitutions going on. And they're really partially using these substitutions as a partial timeout to plan stuff with their team. Now their team has one. Good. On the first, the sophomore from Temple Hills. Former number one recruit out of the state of Kentucky. The highest ranking recruit in BCU history has hit four of four to put the Wildcats back up by three. 72-69, five seconds left. Now I think coaches, if they get in the half court, watch for them to foul again. Madlock throws it up. He's fouled! He's fouled! And he's gonna go to the line to shoot three free throws to potentially tie the game. Unbelievable. Seneca Willoughby called for the foul We're on TJ Madden. Look at it on the monitor. It, okay. <laughs> All right. Biggest free throws of the game now for Madlock. Got the first one. Two point game.
Alabama State clears out. Got the second one, one point game. Madlock to potentially send us to overtime. And they clear out. They're basically giving it all to him. He oh. got it. 72-72. 1.5 left. Neither team has a timeout. A pom-pom. We have pom cheerleader threw a pom-pom on the floor. All the Wildcats need to do is just not turn this over and we get overtime. We have seen some wild. Wow. They just announced that if somebody throws something on the floor, it's going to be a tech against BCU. Long throw. Turned over. Half court heave. No good, and from absolutely nowhere, we go to overtime for the second time this season at Moore Gym. The first time we went to overtime was against Southern, and that was the Wildcats coming back from down big. The opposite has happened. The Wildcats have led by as many as 13 and have dropped all the way and ha Fouled on a three-point shot with no time left. And we get five more minutes of basketball. This is unbelievable. If you can have moments back. Because the funny and, thing is, that shot wasn't going to go in. And 100%, right, the play is to let Madlock take that. He's a 16% three-point shooter. Yeah. He has only made 12 on the whole season. But you put him at the free throw line and you can't take it back. I think that Willoughby was trying to foul before the shot. To I, run the same scenario that they had run the, fir the first two times. Yeah, but then it, then it, it didn't. It, uh, that's in the past, five minutes left in this now overtime game that we have here in more gymnasium more gym hates a boring game nope well, cannot this, have a boring game here this was already interesting but now it gets five plus minutes the fouls stay so bcu is still in only sorry the hornets are still only in the single bonus for one more foul and it's two shots all the way for Alabama State. The fouls stay, four for Ward, four for Octave, three for Range, three for Willoughby on Bethune-Cookman, nobody else with more than two. Jacoby Hetty has played 36 minutes. He has 22 points. The Wildcats have been outscored in the second half, 36 to 25. A carbon copy of Saturday's game against Alabama A&M, except that the Wildcats hit the last shot. And in this one, the Hornets hit the last shot. Alabama State wins the tip, five minutes of free basketball. Madlock tries a three, short. <laughs> Rebound so important. And DJ Carter Hollinger gets the first one. Reggie Ward is set to check back in. He sat for most of the second half with four fouls. Now back-to-back -back overtime games from Alabama State. Could feel the effects of that in this overtime period. Alabama State was up by 16 against Florida A&M. FAMU forced overtime and in and out from DJ. And eventually won it. That was back on Saturday in Tallahassee. Range steps into a three, got it. The first lead goes to the Hornets. Dyson floats it. 
in. One point game. We know how clutch he is in these late game we situations. We do. We very much know how clutch Deshaun Dyson is. He's up to 12. Almost a turnover, but it's over the fingertips of Harmon. Range takes another three. Too strong. James Henderson is in at the five for Bethune-Cookman. He's seen limited minutes tonight after starting. Day Day pulls up. Got it! Dyson two for two in the extra period. Both teams have been granted one more timeout in this overtime. Hines around the screen. It. Lost it! Zion the other way! All the way! Get it! Tough layup by Zion Harmon. Making that bucket count, making the turnover count was so important in these overtime periods. Got to play defense up by three, 2.52 to go. Zion forced the turnover last time. Madlock surveys. He goes left. He drives, floats it up, and he gets fouled by Henderson. That's Henderson's third foul and will send Madlock back to the line. Yep. Where he is 11 of 13, including five in a row at the end of the game to send the game to overtime. Yep. Dyson immediately gets in Henderson's ear about it. And Coach Madlock is talking to Ocon. First one is good. And Reggie Ward comes in with his four fouls. Yep. It'll probably be his game until he fouls out. Although the Wildcats do not have a true center on the floor right now. With DJ Carter Hollinger at 6-6 playing that role. Both are good again from Madlock. 13 of 15. And it's back to a one-point game. Amar Knox checks back in. He'll replace range. The only player with four fouls is Octave, and he hasn't seen the floor for quite some time. That's for Alabama State, rather. Reggie Ward playing with four fouls for Bethune-Cookman. They trap Dyson, dribbles through, back to Zion. He looks at the rim from 30 feet out. He goes to his left hand, he's fouled, and he got it good! And one for number one, Zion Harmon. Making a tough, late bucket with the opportunity to put the Wildcats up four. Harmon was nowhere in this game offensively early on. He's up to 14, and he also hit four clutch free throws down the stretch. And that's the fifth foul on Micah Octave. I didn't think he was in the game. Nobody else really in foul trouble for them. Range is three. Obviously, Reggie Ward is four for the Wildcats and Henderson Jr. And now three. everybody's going to the bench, and I think they're going to go to the monitor to check who the foul is on. And this just heaps pressure on Zion Harmon now as he awaits his and one free throw with the Wildcats up by three. Remember, both of these teams play the oh. top two teams in the SWAC as two of their last three games. The Wildcats go to Southern and Grambling State. The Hornets host Southern and Grambling State. I guess they didn't feel like checking. Zion continues to be good from the free throw line. Four point game now. And here we're gonna do this all over again, Henson. All the stress, the last two minutes of regulation, get ready for it again. Here's the screen for Knox. Knox, nice crossover to the lane, got it. Nifty move by Knox. Two score game, I mean two point game rather, with two minutes left. And uh, just like regulation, the team that has the ball last may have the best chance at it. Harmon takes a deep three. He's got oh! the hot hands! And he's up to 20 points on the night. That's one way to make it a two-score lead again. 
Now a stop would really yeah, turn really. the screws. Yeah. It's going to be a screen for Knox again. He goes to the lane. He is met at the goal, and he's fouled and won by Deshaun Dyson. It's Dyson's third foul. They said Dyson was not straight up, and he was moving. And a chance to bring it within two again. And in that position, I don't know. I, I assume he thought he could block it, and I understand he wants to contest that, but you're in a... He wasn't in a position where he wouldn't have gotten that called on him. Knox, oh, got it. Front rim, back rim, good. Two point game again. 125 to go as these teams trade punches down the stretch in overtime. We brought up free throw shooting and then in this last couple of minutes of regulation, both teams have been insane from that. Zion traps. Heady baseline, and he is hauled to the ground. And Theus is immediately in the ear of the official. He wants a flagrant yeah, for that. He, that's that's got it. <laughs> put his entire arm and wrapped him up before he could do anything. And they will go to the monitors. I'm not sure who that is on. That's on a uh, <laughs> Ocon. Is more Jim reminds him of the rules of basketball. It is on Ocon. I just checked the replay. Thank you to the over 300 of you staying up late to watch basketball here on the East Coast. Until you said that, I didn't realize it was 10.07. I thought it was still like eight. Another late one here at Moore Gymnasium. Well, there's nothing new about that. Nope. <laughs> but it's the final time. This building, Henson, is so special. Obviously, you're a student here. You've gone to games. Now you've had the opportunity to call games and you know more than anybody else how special this place is. Yeah, I mean, though we have the stage on the right side and a wall, a literal wall on the left side of the court, you know, having the setup that we do have, it, you know, certain things we don't have, but certain things we do have, you can't beat the atmosphere in here when it's loud because of, you know, you have those huge stadiums and you have your Wake Forest, your Dukes that have, you know, 20, 30,000 seaters, but there's something about having a court where you can have your student section right there next to the players, right next to them during every possession that no other stadium, most other major D1 stadiums just won't have. It's just something about this place, the energy in this place just is incomparable. So I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be a common foul. Nope, it is a flagrant. It's a flagrant foul. It was a late signal from the referee on Ocon. And now, Zion, who else? Zion Harmon. Yeah. With the Wildcats up by two, 68 ticks left. It actually, no, it's gonna be Hetty at the line. Yeah. The gym holds its breath, and Hetty rewards them. As a hush falls over more gymnasium again here. The Chicago native sinks two. And the Wildcats get the ball off the tech. And all of a sudden, the Hornets might have to foul or at least try to force well, an early turn. I, I don't think they're gonna foul with a minute eight left. Yeah. We'll see. Both teams in the double bonus. Wildcats gotta get this one in safely. Really not a lot of turnovers in this one. Nine for Bama State, seven for the Wildcats. Yep. Zion will reset to Dyson. He goes to the hole. He floats it up. It's in and out. It's batted around. It's taken by Madlock. And it's a foul on the Wildcats. Four-point game, 59 seconds left. And Hines now to the free throw and line. It's not a tech okay. or, I, or, or flagrant. Yeah, they, for a second. Wildcats were just getting instructions from Coach Theus. Yeah. I'm not sure who the foul was on. I think it was on Carter Hollinger. Well, in that case, it would be his fourth. No, second. I read the stat wrong. <laughs> now two shots. This to make it a two-point game again. 
The Wildcats give up a chance to make it a three possession game. Oh, Nobody <laughs> wants to miss a free throw here late. Three point game. Hines, who is 77% from the line on the season, makes both again. Both teams in the 80s for free throws in the ball game. Remember, both teams still have one timeout. 51 seconds left. Ward high post. DJ back to Ward. Shovel to Harmon. 15 on the shot clock. Harmon wants motion. He's against Madlock. He gets the screen to the baseline. Zion back to DJ. Got to put it up. He does. It's no good. The ball's loose on the ground. DJ puts it up. Oh, and he's fouled as he careened left and right. Landmines going off everywhere. The ball was loose on the ground for what seemed like an age. Yep. And now, I don't think there's going to be no shot clock after this. No. Two shots for DJ Carter Hollinger. Against Alabama A&M on Saturday, Carter Hollinger was six of eight from the free throw line, including two massive ones down the stretch that tied the game and gave the Wildcats a chance to win. Yep, he is overall an almost a, basically an 85% free throw shooter. So he's not a bad option to hear have on the line. First one, it teased us, but it went down. Three point game, 26 seconds left. Now, do the Wildcats foul again? and make it a free throw shooting contest like they did at the end of regulation. And it really hasn't worked in their favor. I mean, they've been making them at this point. Got the second one. Talked over because I knew it was going in. Four but. point game, 24 seconds left for the Wildcats foul and forced them to the line. It's yeah. Knox, oh. he lost the ball. Got it back though. Trapped on the baseline, Zion works left. Knox, lost it again, oh, out of bounds. Wildcat ball, Wildcat ball, 14 seconds to go. What a defensive stand by Bethune Cookman. Coach Theus preaches defense every day, and the defense comes through. They're going to call one more timeout for the Wildcats. More gymnasium going out with a bang in the last homestand of the season. A game winner on Saturday, an overtime thriller on Monday. What more could you ask for? Nothing else. I mean, an excellent defensive possession there by Zion Harmon. Almost forcing two turnovers, getting the one, the important, all important one. Now, all the Wildcats really need to do is keep the ball in. And thank you to the over 1,289 people <laughs> watching overtime college swag basketball at 10:13. How are you guys doing? 14.2 seconds left. I have a running joke with assistant coach Adam Tom. Where after every game like this, I go to him and I say, Tom, I told you, no more heart attacks. But this gym doesn't do doesn't do blowouts. No. Nope. It doesn't do boring games. Definitely doesn't do more than one blow at a night. Let me tell you something. <laughs> well, we did get a blowout in the first game. A yeah. big win for the women's team that puts them back squarely in the playoff conversation. And they're going into the last three games. 14.2 seconds left. I am sure that they will run an inbounds play designed to get the ball to Zion Harmon. Yeah, I mean, or DJ Carter Hollinger, if that Zion option doesn't work. Or Hetty. Anybody, honestly, probably you're cool with getting the ball. Seneca's obviously going to be the gunner here. None of the guys, I mean, Dyson hasn't been the best from the free throw line, but he is solid as well. The band continuing to be the loudest cheering section of the building. But the rest of Moore Jim has done their part tonight. They try to get the ball in. Got to get it in. They do to DJ. He is wrapped up. And you were right. DJ was the motion. They tried to get it to Zion. He was double teamed. DJ was left open. 
And now all he has to do really to put this game probably beyond a shadow of a doubt is make these two. But now Alabama State does have a timeout. Yep. And I think you wait to see how this first possession goes to use that timeout. It's depending on how this free throw goes, of course. Carter Hollinger makes the first one. DJ, along with Damani McIntyre and Deshaun Dyson, who are all on the floor right now, playing their final seconds of basketball at Moore Gym yep. in their careers. They all graduate this year. They had senior night celebrated on Saturday. And Carter Hollinger comes through in the clutch again. Yep. 90 to 84. And what did Coach Theus tell us? When the Wildcats score big, they usually win the game. They had to battle more than usual. A three from CJ off the front of the rim. Tip in, no good. The ball goes into the hands of Deshaun Dyson. He throws it up the floor, and this one belongs to the Maroon and Gold. Another more classic to end the home schedule in 2024. 90 to 84 in overtime. Wow, that's that's all you can say. Yeah, very, very good performance from the Wildcats in that first half. The second half, not so much, but they did a good job, or a good enough job to just keep themselves in this game, not give up the full lead and ending up tied. Let's well, gonna take a look at some of the stats we have here. For the Wildcats, Jacoby Hetty at 24, most points for the Wildcats and leading the points in the game overall. Zion Harmon with 20, Deshaun Dyson at 16, Carter Hollinger at 12, Reggie Ward with 11, Holisway with seven, didn't play much down the stretch. 41 minutes and a double-double for Jacoby Hetty. Zion Harmon had the uh, team best six assists, two double-doubles. DJ also had one with a 12 in 10 game for himself. Madlock, on the other hand, for the uh, Hornets had a great performance. 13 of 15 from the free throw line. Two of seven from beyond the arc in 37 minutes. Only got two fouls. Didn't, never turned the ball over. Octave had 15 points. Hines had 14. Knox had 10. Six for Range. Six for Smith. Four for Reed. Three for Parker. Two for Walker. And one for Ocom, who had a team tie high of eight rebounds along with Octave, but couldn't get that last rebound at the tail end of the game. Three blocks for Reed, five fouls for Octave, who fouled out, and they surely missed him in that overtime period. Yeah, I mean, that Madlock free throw shooting performance is up there for me personally. Did a great job. Never let the game get to him. Never let Moore get to him. Because if he misses even just one of these, we don't have an overtime period. Yeah. Like, well, and you got to remember that the Wildcats were in line to win the game with three seconds left, and then it was a foul on a three-point shot. Madlock went to the line, made all three of them to force overtime, but then in overtime, the Wildcats did enough. Zion Harmon lit up the scoreboard in overtime. Threes, step back twos, he did it all, and some clutch th free throw shooting as well. And I want to mention DJ Carter Hollinger, who sank the two free throws to end the game in his last appearance at Moore Gymnasium. Um, I'm going to shout out all the seniors as the band plays the alma mater for the last time this season. Damani McIntyre didn't score today, but he had three assists, two steals, a block, and a typical McIntyre performance. And Deshaun Dyson, excellent again. 16 points, 5 of 17 from the floor, 5 of 7 from the line, 5 rebounds, an assist, a steal. We will hear from head coach Reggie Theus on the post-game show coming up shortly. Let's run you through the team stats. The Hornets out rebounded the Wildcats 46 to 44 and 19 to 14 on the offensive glass, leading to 19 second chance points for the Hornets and 12 for Bethune Cookman. Wildcats 16 assists to the Hornets 14. But what did we talk about? The first thing at the top of the broadcast, turnovers. We got 10 turnovers, we only turned the ball over seven times. Points off turnovers, 14 for the Wildcats, 11 for the Hornets. That was your game right there. Yeah, I mean, that turnover battle, and considering how many turnovers we usually see here in Moore Gym, 
and that's not just the you know not just the men's game but in the women's games as well seeing a game with just 17 total turnovers when usually we're seeing that for one team just how you know the high level of the swag down the stretch here no team really wanted to make that last mistake but the hornets blinked first the exterminator came late but he sure did come yeah an uncharacteristic performance on the fast break 21 fast break points for alabama state 12 for bethune cookman they were set up in the half court for most of that second half they didn't want to get out and run like they typically do as coach theus makes his way to our broadcast position seven steals for bethune cookman six for alabama state i already said 14 points off turnovers for the wildcats 11 for the hornets here's another crucial stat Wildcats, 36 points in the paint. Hornets, 34. With how lopsided the rebounding margin was for the majority of the game, that is a number I didn't really expect. Yeah, towards that tail end, that second half, and especially in that overtime period, they did a great job of getting boards late. We are now joined by head coach Reggie Theus. Coach, I didn't think it could get more exciting than it did on Saturday, and it almost did tonight. The overtime win, 92-84. Uh, what are your thoughts on the game? Well, you know, sometimes when you can get any shot you want, sometimes when you a team is playing a, a defense that it's not a difficult defense, it's, it's hard to, for players to understand not to settle. And, I, you know, I preach to them constantly about not settling. But every shooter, everybody that shoots the ball thinks it's going in. But they, but they have to understand in, in terms of where the games are, when you win and lose, you, you, if, you're, if you're playing perimeter basketball and all you're doing is taking jump shots, if they're going in, that's great. But if not, you've got to find another way. It's you score, you get jumpers off a driving kick. Again, our defense held us up, gave us a chance. We had one of our guys. You know, that's why it's always a dilemma. Foul or no foul at the end of the game. And what I told our guys, play defense, they cross half court, foul them. Don't let a guy run downhill and you foul him on the jump shot. You gotta meet him at half court and then foul. So that way you run off three or four seconds. Yeah. Um, this game in the first half and really the beginning of the second half almost mirrored Saturday's game against Alabama AM. and Y'all had a really hot start. We're shooting 60% plus from the field and almost 70% from three in the first half. Had an 11-point lead. And uh, we were talking during halftime, and I said, the rush is coming. And boy, did it. But you all held st steady, and they were able to close it out. Well, you know, it, listen, this is a time of year where every game is going to be like this. I tell our guys, I think I said this last week, I'm not sure, or last on Saturday. If you're not ready for a war, don't show up. Because in the SWAC, teams don't give up. No matter what's going on, they don't give up. And, uh, you know, ultimately, players make plays. Down the stretch, our best players made the plays we needed to make. And, and that's really a defensively, we were solid. Once we got to the point where we were switching and we got, when they like to drive the slots, and when they drive the slots, we just have to do a better job of guarding in those slots. And it's just about moving your feet and being solid. Yeah. Big night for Jacoby Hetty, 24 points, 10 rebounds, double-double for him. He bounces back from a tough performance on Saturday. What about his performance well, throughout tonight? I, I watched film with him after the game. I, I told him I thought he was playing too cool. I thought I, I love the fact that he gets most of his points off, the, off of the flow of the game. But I, I also told him that the way he's playing, he's missing out on about four or five opportunities to score. And tonight he was more aggressive. He was getting to the rim. He's a three-level scorer. Threes, getting to the rim, and free throws, everything. He can do all of it. But when you, when you, when you, when you kind of take a step back and you're just being kind of like, just kind of letting the flow of the game always be the way you score, sometimes as a, as a scorer, you got to go take yours. you got to go get yours. You'd think you'd, you thought you'd close it out in regulation. They hit three free throws at the end to send it to overtime. What was the message to your guys in the huddle getting ready to go to the extra period? Listen, next play. The game's over. The, 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 that section of the game is over. All we got to do is win the overtime. And, and, and I let them know that we are, we are still in control of this game. You know, and, and consequently, we played up. We played the great defense, and then we scored on the other end. Zion came through it with big shots. Dede made a couple of shots. Jacoby made a couple of shots. You know, ultimately, I, I facilitate the team, but when it's all said and done, players make plays.
Big road trip coming up uh, to end the season. Go into the top two teams in the SWAC, Grand yeah. State and Southern, preview the road trip. And, and you know, you're looking at FAM, and FAM just won another game. So they're playing, they're playing good right now. And uh, listen, all we can do is the next game. All we care about right now is the next team we play against, and we'll let the, the chips uh, fall where they're going to. Well, this is a huge game for us because it closes State out. Mm -hmm. Now, they also, uh, A&M is behind, right behind us, and they play each other. Mm -hmm. So, again, someone else is going to lose another one of those games, too. Yeah. One more before I let you go. Yep. This building, we were talking about it on the broadcast down the stretch, is such a special place to watch a basketball game. How does this crowd really get behind you? And, and Listen, I, I've and been in a lot of places that where, where, you know, obviously I come from Los Angeles. We had a, we had a, a games called the Frat Games back in the day uh, where it was kind of like this. Uh, I, I played at – I coached at Louisville, so I was at the Kentucky-Louisville you know, rivalries where the, the fans are always rabid. These fans and the way our, our students come out and band, it is a show that not many places ever get a chance to understand. And unless you are in this gym, you really don't really feel it. But it's a small gym. It's a tough place to play, and, and uh, we, we've shown that we're pretty good here. Thank you, Coach. Congrats on the homestand this week, and good luck on the road. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Once again, your final score, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats 90 the Alabama State Hornets 8 and 4. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats improve to 14 and 14, 500 overall in the season and 9 and 6 in swag play. Alabama State falls to 12 and 16, 7 and 8 in conference. So for the final time this basketball season, it's time to say goodbye from more gymnasium. Once again, I'm going to shout out the Cat Eye Network senior staff of students that help us so much throughout the year. Jada Haynes, Lonnie Seville Russ, December Dukes, Devontae Sims, Malia Ahlegbe. None of this would happen without any of them. And of course, our dedicated full time Cat Eye staff director, Eugene Robertson, producer, Darian McCaskill, SID's Bryce Rynowski, and Brian Harvey. Henson White, who has been with me all season long up here in the analyst desk. He's not done on the Cat Eye Network. There's still baseball and softball to go, but we close out basketball season at Moore with a double dose of Wildcat victory tonight. My name is Michael Torello. Thank you so much for watching all season long, and we'll see you in Tallahassee in two weeks for the finale of basketball season on the radio. But for more Jim, we'll see you next season.